Dr. Hoffer, uh, good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm not sure that you've been in this court before. Um, what uh, the clerk will do is you have 10 minutes. Right. And it'll show, show the number decreasing. And okay. the orange light will begin to flash when you have one minute left. And okay. when the red light flashes, uh, you, you have to stop. Thank you. Your Honors, we are here today because many years ago I was diagnosed with a mental disorder, namely manic depression or bipolar disorder. However, in reality, I was abused. And in the past, I had difficulty coping, coping with life because of my abuse history. My opponent, the Board of Registration in Medicine, is currently requiring that I be in psychiatric treatment in order to regain my medical licensure when the reality is that I do not have a mental illness which requires psychiatric treatment in order for me to live a productive life, including the resumption of my practice of medicine. The Board of Registration in Medicine required that I continue to be in psychiatric treatment in its order of March 3, 2004. As a result of the Board's action against me, I developed severe and disabling migraine headaches. I developed this condition from stress because mandated psychiatric treatment was no longer healthy for me and was no longer medically indicated. I was too sick with migraine headaches to hire legal counsel and certainly too sick to litigate against the board within the 30-day period normally allowed for an appeal of its order. A year later, in February 2005, my migraine headaches subsided somewhat because I successfully <clears throat> underwent a four-month-long in-depth psychiatric evaluation by a national psychiatric trauma expert. This very thorough evaluation puts to rest the questions of my past psychiatric misdiagnoses and the current absence of a need for mandated psychiatric treatment. However, the staff counsel for the Board of Registration and Medicine, <clears throat> Attorney Rebecca Lockwood, told me not to send the report to her and that the board would not read it. I submitted a petition to the Supreme Judicial Court of Suffolk County asking for the right to appeal the board's requirements for reinstatement of my medical license late because of the disabling migraine headaches. If allowed a late appeal, I would submit the expert psychiatric evaluation referenced above. I explained in my brief to the Supreme Judicial Court of Suffolk County that I could not litigate in a timely manner because of medical disability from migraine headaches. I submitted medical records to the court documenting my treatments for migraine headaches from the winter, summer, and fall of 2004 documenting that I was advised by my doctors to put my legal issues aside. Also, I submitted a sworn affidavit documenting the severity of disability from those migraine headaches. I explained how the migraine headaches prevented me from litigating until February 2005, and only in the correct court, the Supreme Judicial Court for Suffolk County, in September 2005. Dr. Hoff, could I ask you a question? Sure. I understand about your affidavit, but with respect to the medical records, do these pertain to the period um, from March 3, 2004 until April 2004, which is the critical month within which you were to file an appeal? Yes, the medical records are in um, the appendix uh, pages 65, 66, and 67, and there are records from two doctors, uh, Dr. Fred Griffith, who was my neurologist at the time that all the problems started with the medical board, and I stayed with him through May of 2004, and then I went to a pain clinic at uh, St. Anne's Hospital in Fall River, and the doctor there also told me to put my legal issues aside. However, the, the single justice at the Supreme Judicial Court for Suffolk County denied my petition to allow the filing of a late appeal of the requirements for reinstatement of my medical license because I missed the 30-day filing deadline. I believe that the single justice erred in denying me the right <coughs> of a late appeal. There are both Massachusetts and federal statutes 
which protect individuals with medical disability or with history of disability. Specifically, the laws state that reasonable accommodations must be made to protect access to the judicial system for such individuals. Federal law specifically cites migraine headaches as a disability. I believe that reasonable accommodation for me would be to allow a filing of a late appeal to the Supreme Judicial Court of Suffolk County of the Board of Registration and Medicine's inappropriate requirements for reinstatement of my medical license. The single justice's comparison of my case to Friedman versus Board of Registration and Medicine, 1993, is faulty. In that case, the physician asked for a late appeal because he discovered new evidence. That case had nothing to do with filing late because of disability. Further, the Freedman's decision states that in limited circumstances, the 30 days for judicial review is susceptible to extension. It is very clear in my petition to the single justice that I requested to file a late appeal because disability had prevented me from filing within the 30 days. I mentioned the Americans with Disabilities Act in my filing to the Supreme Judicial Court for Suffolk County on November 2nd, 2005. However, if this court decides that it does not want to consider the argument of the disability law statutes because I did not more specifically cite the disability law statutes to the single justice, then I respectfully request that the court allow me a late filing of an appeal based on the clear public policy embodied in these statutes. Without your overturning the single justice's decision and granting me the right to file a late appeal, my medical career is finished, for I cannot participate in psychiatric treatment when it is no longer medically indicated. Further, my experience over the past year has shown that no other state will grant me a medical license unless this matter is resolved in Massachusetts. Thank you, Your Honors, for your consideration. Thank you, Dr. Haller. Ms. Spector. Yes, good morning. Amy Spector, Assistant Attorney General for the Board of Registration and Medicine. The only issue before the court today is whether the single justice properly denied Dr. Hoffer's petition to file late a complaint seeking review of the Board of Medicine's decision uh, suspending her license. The petition was filed some 17 months after the Board's decision, and I'll be very brief because I've already laid out the jurisdictional argument um, in the brief in this case and the Maitland case, uh, which also was, was to be heard today, is being submitted on the brief. Um, it's well established that uh, the time limit for an action seeking judicial review of the board's <coughs> decision is 30 days um, and that that time limit is jurisdictional and that the failure to file within the time limit results in dismissal of the case unless within, uh, within the 30 days or an extension thereof, a good cause extension is sought. Um, here that wasn't done, and even if the court were to adopt the type of reasonable accommodation analysis under the discrimination statutes that were cited by Dr. Hoffer, um, allowing her to file the petition at such a long period of time after a 30-day deadline would not be a reasonable accommodation under any stretch. Have any other courts held that, um, that the Americans with Disabilities Act does apply to jurisdictional time requirements? Um, or at least that you're aware of. I'm, I am aware of one, I just became aware of one decision um, by a New York court. I, you, I can, you, can submit it, you can submit it in with the a letter. letter. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't believe it's directly on point. It involved, I think it involved a regulation, not, not something of a jurisdictional nature. That's the only decision. Um, I, I, frankly, I didn't look far and wide in other jurisdictions. I didn't think that the, um, I thought that the court could stop at, even if it were to adopt that sort of analysis, that the length of time in this case. Well, if was the disability too great. continued, when, when, when was the 
When was the um, uh, w when was the appeal filed, or the attempted appeal filed? Well, Se 17 months later. Se 17 months later in this court, 11 months. The, the board's decision was in March of 2004. Dr. Hoffer filed a complaint in the Bristol Superior Court uh, some 11 months later, so in February 2005. And when did her migraines uh, um, recede? Um, I, I believe her position is that they, that, that they uh, subsided at, at around that time. In other but words, if, at around the time that she filed her if complaint what, in, in the Superior Court. If it transpires that having a disability precludes you from filing, and I'm not suggesting that the record here establishes that one way or the other, but if it does, it can simply be that 17 months is too long a period. There has to be some connection between the disability and the failure to file for the period of time that there was a failure to file. <coughs> Am I correct? Um, well, I, I think in this case, uh, again, I haven't myself gotten too far into the discrimination statutes, but I know that e even apart from whether the length of time would be considered reasonable, the analysis under those federal and state statutes also allows for the fact <coughs> that an accommodation need not be given when to do so would fundamentally alter um, the program or activity at issue. And no, I, I understand that. So under they Chapter 30A, given the fairly short time constraint, um, I think that to give an accommodation in this case anyway, after this length of time, would alter the underlying purposes. The Could you also tell me, I'm sorry, when was the Bristol County complaint dismissed? That was dismissed in August of 2005, and then uh, within a month of that, Dr. Hoffer filed a petition in this court. She also simultaneously appealed um, the Superior Court's decision. At, at what point did the, um, did the board file its motion to dismiss in that case that would have presumably alerted Dr. Hoffer that she was in the wrong court? I don't know that offhand. Um, I, could, I can certainly um, check the appendix. Um, well, we can get that in a second, but if, if, um, so based on what you've said to me, assuming that she had a disability and assuming that reasonable accommodation was required and assuming that reasonable accommodation included extending the statute of limitations and assuming that the court had the jurisdiction to do that, all of which are, assumptions uh, that are not very well fleshed out. When she finally filed in February of 2000, filed in Bristol Superior Court, did she claim that she had been unable to file previously because of a disability? I believe so, yes. I believe that's in her. Um... And did she, and was that filing made within 30 days of her um, recovery from migraine sufficient so that she could file, consult an attorney and file in the Bristol Superior Court? Um, Your Honor, I'm not, I'm not certain of the exact date that Dr. Hoffer's condition changed. I, I believe she says that at around the time that it changed, then she did file her complaint in Superior Court. I'm not, um, I'm not familiar enough with the date, the specific dates of the medical records. Uh, can, can I ask you um, the, the question that I asked previously in a different form? Are there any courts that have held that the Americans with Disabilities Act does not apply to judicial proceedings? Um, uh, none that I'm aware of. No. If, if, if taking our jurisdictional statute, which, you have, which says you have 30 days to file your appeal, but if you file a request within that 30 days to extend the period, um, it can be extended. Does that, um, does that constitute reasonable accommodation under the Act, at least in your understanding, provided you make the request within the 30-day period? Yes, our position, yes. I think that that is fair to say, that it's, it is a short time period, but that within, within that time period, you can ask for and obtain a, a good cause extension, and that would be an accommodation. Um, but if, there, you're, uh, if, you're, 
if your disability is such that you cannot do that, that's, it seems to me, her claim here, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to ascertain whether that claim was raised in the Superior Court, and your answer to that is yes. No. I, I, I believe that it okay. was. And was it raised in, in the single justice before the it, single? It was raised before the single justice, okay. yes. I don't, I don't think that um, the discrimination statutes were cited, but um, regardless of what is in the board's brief, uh, I, I would certainly concede that she raised it before the single justice, even if not by specific um, mention of those statutes. She clearly did raise a disability as a reason for seeking additional time. Thank you, Ms. Thank Speaker. you.